Good day, dear students. Welcome to 21st Century Literature Class. I am your subject teacher, Mrs. Jenalyn R. Adato. Before we start our very first lesson for this semester, I'll be sharing with you a short video which will give you an idea of what you need to expect on the subject 21st Century Literature from the Philippines and the world. So sit back and relax while watching this video. At the end of the semester, you will learn these four concepts. First concept, comparing and contrasting the different literatures of the Philippines from the pre-colonial to the 21st century in terms of its genre, structures, and elements. Second concept, be familiar with the authors from different regions and their contributions to the Philippine literature. We will give emphasis to the Region 4A. Third concept, comparing and contrasting the various literary genres and their structure, elements, and tradition from across the globe, most especially from Asia, North America, Europe, Latin America, and Africa. Fourth and last concept, identifying literature in the 21st century and appreciating the role of technology in shaping the literature in the 21st century. There you have it. Those are the four concepts, or should I say the summary of what will be discussed in the 21st century literature. I hope everyone is excited as I am, because definitely we are going to learn more, not only about the Philippine literature, but as well as the other continent across the globe. Now at this point, I want you to get a piece of paper and a pen to take note of the important details that you will be gaining from this lesson. I'll give you 20 seconds to do that. Alright, so before I begin my discussion, I will be reading some statements. Now, I want you to analyze those statements. Express your answer whether you agree or disagree. You can use the comment section. You can type yes if you agree. If not, you can type no. Alright, so let's start. Okay, so let's begin. For the first statement... Ancient settlers in the islands of the Philippines had their own form of literature even before the coming of the Spaniards. So once again, just state yes if you agree or no if you do not agree with the statement that I am reading now. Just use the comment section to answer Now let's move on to the next um, statement. Most of the ancient literary forms were in oral tradition since there was no system of writing that existed during pre-colonial period. Is it a yes or a no? Let me check your answer from the comment section. All right, so I'm seeing a lot of yes. Mm, okay, so let's move on to the third statement. It was during the Spanish occupation that literature was introduced to the Philippines. You might want to take note as well of your answer because later today we'll be uh, checking whether your answers are correct. So number four statement, literature is a way used by our forebears to communicate their stories to future generations. For the fifth statement, 
legends are stories popular in the country which highlights the assumed origin of a thing, a uh, place, or of anything. All right, so for the sixth statement. Philippine literary texts are only those written in the native or local language. So, um, through this, I'll be able to see your knowledge, prior knowledge about Philippine literature. Now, for the seventh uh, statement, primitive literary forms reveal the way of life of our forebears, including their tradition, beliefs, norms and more so more is the custom and for the eighth and final statement um ancient philippine literature was generally in oral tradition okay want to see your answer from the comment section all done very good. Now, um, before we check your answer, I, I want to hear your or want to I want to see your thoughts regarding those statements that I uh, I read today. So you will be guided with these questions. Number one question: What is being described from those statements? What do you think is being uh, described? What's what is it about? Again, you may use the comment section for the answer. Okay, so yes, very good. It's about the Philippine literature. And how was it being described? I'm checking the comment section for your answer. Okay, very good. I already see uh, the right answer. Um, through the use of significant events or significant uh, period in our history, um, it was able to describe what literary forms we have or liter literatures we have during those times. All right, so finally, why is it important to know the significant period in our history, especially in studying Philippine literature? I want to see your answer from the comment section. Okay, so excellent. So definitely it is important that we know the period in our history for us to be able to trace the development of the Philippine literature. So um, it is necessary to trace the development of our literature during uh, those times because, uh, as you know, it shaped the identities of our nation, hailed as the peril of the Orient and knowing uh, the various times or the movement in uh in in time, it will it will give change, development, progress. Um, it evolves. What else? It uh, it gives new creation in our literature. So it's very imperative that we know the timeline or the history because it has something to do on how our literature has evolved all right so now i want you to have a meaningful experience and i want you to be productive with our lesson for today so with that let me present with you the learning objectives for this lesson so first i want you to trace the developmental underpinnings of the philippine literature Next, determine and highlight the various literary forms prevailed in every period in the history of our country. And finally, you have to develop or you have to establish genuine interest to explore the literary wonders of the Philippines. So um, make sure that you have a pen and paper 
because you have to take note of the important details that will be discussed in our lesson for today. Now, just to give you a summary, um, here is the timeline of the Philippine literature. So this will be discussed as well as the, the dates when this event had happened. Um, I'll discuss it one by one. So I want you to take note of the important details, specifically the period, what else, the, um, the literary forms that um, was developed during the time, those times the writers, um, as well as their work or contributions, the theme, and the motif of literary works that has been produced during those specific times. Okay, so this will be the discussion starting from the pre-colonial Spanish colonization, period of enlightenment, American colonization, initial autonomy, Japanese occupation, and finally, the post-war. So I hope you will be able to um, appreciate our um, history and uh, literature after the end of this discussion. So let's start with the first um topic which is about the pre-colonial which started from before christ up to 1564 so what is the characteristic of the pre-colonial literature it is based on oral tradition so um it uh the Literature has been passed through word of mouth from one generation to the next generation. Elders and parents serve as a teacher for the ethnic groups. Another characteristic of this um, literature under pre-colonial, it has crude on ideology and pressurology, meaning the body of beliefs and uh, principles belongs from a specific group of individuals. In terms of its literary forms, um, our ancestor and forebears already have developed their own forms of literature, even before the foreign occupation. So this includes oral literature, um, riddles. Riddles are called Bugtong in Tagalog, it's a battle of wit. Proverbs is Salawikain in Tagalog. You already know what it is. It teaches life lesson. It's a wise saying and uh, um, it contains metaphor used to teach as life lesson. It's also a food for thought. Tanaga, it's more emotionally challenged uh, compared with Proverbs, but it express as well insights or lesson in life. Another is folk songs. Folk songs are forms of lyrics which expresses the hopes and aspirations, even the lifestyle of the people, as well as love. So it's often repetitive. It it it, it includes hele or oyai, which is uh, a form of lullaby. Uh, tagay is a Tagalog term for drinking. So it's a drinking song which originated from Cebuano and Waray. Kanogan is, uh, is also came from Cebuano, which is a song um, of lamentation for the dead. Ambahan came from Mangyan. It's a se seven-syllable per-line poem that are about human uh, relationship and social entertainment. Another is folk tales. It includes myth. Uh, myth explains how the world was created and how certain animals possess certain characteristics. So why some places has this, say for example, mountain, waterfalls, um, what else, volcanoes, etc. While fables, it uses um, animal character or allegory. Fantastic stories, on the other hand, deals with characters or underworld characters like the Tianak, Aswang, Capre, and others. So, used in the horror movies. 
Now, lastly, epic. Um, epics are narratives of sustained length based on oral tradition. It revolves around uh, supernatural events or heroic deeds. Example is Biag Nilam Ang, a very famous one, which came from Ilocanos, Kudaman from Palawan, Hinilawod from um, Panay, Darangin, and Maranao. So the next period that will be discussed is the Spanish colonization. So this started in 1565 to 1872. Imagine it's uh, the longest occupation. Uh, they uh, their presence bring us or brought numerous tremendous changes in our country. So I want you to do the math and subtract how long they stay here. Okay, so um, it's three centuries or 307 years uh, to be exact. So this period has two distinct classification, uh, the religious and secular. Christianity has emerged or has been proclaimed in this period. So um, the long presence of the Spaniards in our country had uh, brought numerous and um, tremendous changes, not only in our lives, but also with the religion as well as the language. At this time, uh, the Spanish uh, language has been introduced as a medium of communication. Not only that, even the system of writing. So the Roman alphabet has been used as, the, as a system of writing this time. Now, in terms of its literary forms, Again, it has two classification. The religious literature includes Pasion and Sanaholo. The secular literature includes Awit, Corrido, and Prose Narrative. Religious literature, um, these are religious lyrics written by Ladino poets. Um, those verse were written both Spanish and Tagalog, were um, included in the early catechism, and were used to teach Filipinos on how to speak the Spanish language. Passion, this is a long narrative poem about passion and the death of Christ. The most popular passion was written by Aquino de Leon. And the title of this is Ang Mahal na Passion ni Jesu Christong Panginoon Natin. So, on the other hand, secular literature is non-religious literature. So, Awit is one of this example, which... Um, is about colorful tales of chivalry made for singing and chanting. Perfect example is Ibong Adarna. So, diba, there is already a theater and a movie adaptation of uh, Ibong Adarna. Next is Corrido. It is a metrical tale written in octosyllabic quatrains. So, this example is Florante at Laura, written by the famous uh, Francisco Baltazar. And lastly, prose narrative, it is written to prescribe proper decorum. One example was written by Modesto de Castro um, entitled Pagsusulatan ng Dalawang Binibini na si Urbana at Felixa. Now, let's have the third period which has a title or period of enlightenment in 1872 to 1892 and revolutionary period in 1896 to 1900. So what is the characteristic of this? Actually, in this period, the Filipinos had achieved partly um, a degree of influence and importance in the society. So in this time, it planted seeds of nationalism in the Filipinos and the what else? Language shifted from Spanish to Tagalog and they addressed their work to the masses in instead of the intelligentsia. Um, so the Filipinos' desire is to give intellect or knowledge. And this is evident to their uh, writings during this time. They wanted to establish an equal position with the Spaniards. Now, several or various forms of literature emerged, but there were rich collections of poetry written by the uh, heroes in, our, in this time. So, this include 
uh, propaganda literature and also the political novel. So under propaganda literatures, um, it the the objective of this is to reform, reform, reformatory. So political essay is under this, which um, cre- provides satire, editorials, and news articles uh, to expose the evil Spanish rule, to attack the Spanish that time. So, Jaryong Tagalog was one of those, um, which founded by Marcelo Del Pilar, and Lazo Ridaridad, uh, whose editor-in-chief is Graciano Lopez Harina. Next is political novels. So, under political novels, we have No Limitang Hire and El Filibusterismo, which were both written by our um, national hero, um, Jose P. Rizal. So, this particular piece has actually faved away to the revolution of our country. Next is the revolutionary liter- literature, still under the literary forms. So, more propagandist uh, or more uh, propagandistic literary has emerged during this time. As um, it is the, uh, it became more violent in nature and demanded to uh, have independence. So, this one, the political essay example of this is Kalayaan, which is written by, it's, it's, it's a newspaper of the society edited by Emilio Jacinto. And the uh, poetry is through the de- Decalogue, kata pusang hibik ng uh, Pilipinas, written by Andres Bonifacio, and then Liwanang at Dilim, uh, written by Emilio Jacinto again. So now let's have the fourth, which is the American colonization, which started in 1900s to 1942. So what is the characteristic of this? It is divided into two periods, the period of apprenticeship apprenticeship in 1910 to 1930 and period of emergence in 1920 to 1930. So the period of apprenticeship was actually um, in this period uh, there was an imitation of writing. Uh, Filipino writers tend to imitate English and American mod, uh, novels or master uh, works. Then under the period of emergence um, this time, this is highly influenced by the Western literary trends like Romanticism and Realism. So, again, two parts of literary forms emerge in American colonization. The period of apprenticement, um, it has short stories, example of which are Dead Stars by, Ma- Mar- uh, by Paz Marquez Benitez, The Key by Paz Lato Rena, Footnote to Youth by Jose Garcia uh, Villa. Another literary forms under the period of apprenticeship would be the novels. An example of this is the Child of Sorrow by Zoilo Galang. So these are the representative writers and sample texts that emerged during this period of um, apprenticeship. On the other hand, on the period of emergence, um, this includes short stories as well. And uh, the poet of the century during that time is Jose Garcia Villa. Now let's have the initial autonomy or period of initial autonomy. So this is the fifth period that we're going to be discussing for today. So, in this period, um, actually, a certain um, group of aristocratic has formed. The characteristic of literature under this period, um, mostly works perceived to be of no value were eliminated. And there were comparison between urban and rural living. It became a common focus in most of the texts. In In terms of literary forms, in poetry, um, free verse and modern themes were considered. 
however, uh, novels and even theatrical plays became slowly uh, showed from, from the people because it became unpopular because during that time, foreign film has been introduced. So we're almost done. Let's have the sixth um, period, which is the Japanese colonization. So Japanese colonization started in 1942 to 1950. Uh, the coming of Japanese conquest in our land actually brings or created um, a positive effects in Tagalog literature. That's why it became the period of maturity and originality. So the use of English language were prohibited during this time. Um, it served as the golden years for short stories and Tagalog drama. There were bountiful harvests of poetry, fictions, drama, and essay in this type of period or history of our country. Now, in terms of literary forms, um, it has Tanaga, which created by Ildefonso Santos. So another short stories became one of the dominant forms of literature and one of which was written by Narciso. And the title of this uh, short story was Lupang Tinubuan. So again, it was written by Narciso Reyes. Another is uh, Dugo at Utak, written by Cornelio S. Reyes. Now let's have the last and final topic for or period for this um, lesson, which is the post-war period or period of the Philippine Republic uh, started from 1946 to 1972. So in this period, the very first uh, republic was established. Um, characteristic uh, of this, of the literature in this period um, the social issues and domestic conditions were uh, mostly offered or became the main theme on most of the re uh, writings of the writer. New themes, styles, and techniques were also considered and utilized. So it offers different taste of literature to its readers. It was also in this time which two forms of literature was emerged. So these are commercial and literary forms. So the commercial magazine, journals, and revolutionary poems uh, became the dominant literary forms in this particular period. Okay, so that's the end of my discussion. I know it's a lot of information, but I believe that you already know some of those because we've been studying this since elementary. Now, I want to, again, once again, hear your thoughts about what I have discussed for today. So any realization, you may comment once again on our comment section. Okay, so anyone who would like to share? Okay, so I guess that's it. Um, I, uh, I understand that once again, it's a lot of information, but uh, you will realize that the Philippines has a rich and unique culture and history. And uh, it has a lot to offer in terms of the literature. So it's truly our treasure. I hope that uh, you were able to take note of the most important pieces of information because uh, you will be having an activity wherein you have to supply um, the information needed from this table. So this is the table that you're going to be needing to complete for the task for today. 
Um, I've already prepared uh, this in our Google uh, Classroom. So for those who haven't joined yet, here is the code. So FX2VLZS. Um, so all you need to do is to join. And then under the stream section, you will see here a new assignment. But this is a task that I um, provided for today for you to be able to complete the activity. So right after this, I'll give you some uh, few minutes, um, at least 15 minutes. And then we'll have to have another activity. So, please join now and uh, check with the activity. <coughs> 15 minutes later. Okay, hello class, I'm back. So, um, at this point, I'll be uh, giving you an interactive activity. Um, um, actually, it's... Uh, it's going to test your wit. You will be answering riddles. So please check the stream section and click on this um, part, the new assignment riddle. So you will be directed and you will be asked to um, type in your name. And then all you need to do is to start this particular um, quiz only for five um, items okay a few minutes later okay so we're back once again so this time this will be the final activity uh, again I assign it to your Google classroom um, this is the part where you need to research for further learning so just click on this. This will serve as your assignment. In this part, you will be writing a short essay about a certain topic that I assigned to you. And you will be researching on that topic and you have to um, discuss your answer in the form of writing. All right. So I hope... You will be able to finish all this task. See you again for tomorrow. Uh, see you in our vir virtual class again tomorrow. Goodbye.